It's awesome that we have different biomes in Jurassic World Evolution 2, but when we go into a map, we just have that one biome with limited terrain paints. And that can lead to all exhibits within a park looking kind of the same. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make different biomes within each of the biomes without any mods. There aren't even any mods yet to help you with making biomes, so these tips are musts for both PC and console players. The long-awaited and much-asked-for Jurassic World Evolution 2 version of one of my most popular videos ever. Hello everyone, welcome to the video, and let's just get started with my favorite biomes, Taiga and Alpine. I'm lumping these two together because they give you the same terrain paints and foliage brushes, which means you can make the same sub-biomes. The first one is simple enough. Using mostly the snow brush, you can make a frozen landscape. Use very little foliage to give it a barren look. I really like the dead trees that come in the decorations. I don't use too many rocks for this one because I want to leave as much snow as possible. If you use a lot of water, you can also make it look like an ice lake. As you see, for this video, I'm making the biomes in the aviaries for extra effect. But obviously, you don't have to make these biomes inside an aviary. You can also just make them out into the open. The next one is a desert. For this one, I use the sand and dirt texture as a base. I hide a small puddle of water behind a hill. You'd place the viewing gallery so guests wouldn't be able to see the water, really committing to that dry look. Of course, in Sandbox, you can also just switch off Thirst and not have any water at all. Perhaps just place a water fountain instead as a play pretend water trough. The trees you'll want to use are the Cycads, which look a bit like palm trees and desert flowers. Obviously, use them sparingly. Cycads? Cycads? Cycads. Cycads. She says cycads, so I'm gonna go with cycads. Now foliage generates in certain places, so go around finding where the good trees spawn and delete the unwanted surrounding shrubbery. In the desert biome, use only desert rocks for obvious reasons. Using the same foliage brush in combination with seed plants and leafy climbers, and a lot of it, you can also make a tropical biome. Now this tropical biome has seen some drought, but we're still dealing with some serious limitations of course. Still, I think it looks quite convincing if you fill up the biome with these three foliage types. Next up is a redwood sub-biome. I use a combination of rock, grass and dirt and a mix of placeable rock colors. For this biome to be the most effective and really stand out as its own separate thing, you want to resist the temptation to use the redwood trees outside of your designated redwood biome area. And honestly, that goes for everything. To make your biomes the most convincing, you want to stick to the default foliage on the rest of the map and really make the other foliage types specific to the other sub-biomes. It goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, that these tips really only work in sandbox because you need to disable herbivore hunger to be able to use certain types of foliage to their maximum effect. A redwood environment, for example, is not going to look like a proper redwood environment if you have to cover it with cycads because that's what your specific herbivores need to eat. Fifth, for the alpine and taiga maps, is a temperate biome. The ground texture is a combination of grass, dirt and sand, and the trees I used are the ginkgo trees. You can acknowledge that these are ginkgo trees and make a Chinese-themed exhibit with the dinosaurs from the Chinese dig sites, like the Changzusaurus or the Velociraptor, or you can just pretend that they are any kind of leafy tree and have it as any temperate environment. Last one I like for alpine and taiga is a coniferous environment. The ground texture is a combination of rock and snow. The tree brush we use is calamites and we fill it out with medium tree 5 and small tree 2. For this environment, I like placing a lot of rocks, particularly the tiger rocks. To maximize the effect of the snow brush in any of your sub-biomes that you're going to create, do not use it outside of your designated biomes. Really pretend that the snow can only exist in these specific biomes that you're creating. We move over to the maps with a temperate biome. You can make a desert biome very similarly to how we did in the taiga and alpine maps. Using rock and dirt terrain textures, the desert placeable rocks, the cycads, and hiding the water. And also using the cycads, the seed plants, and the leafy climbers with the tropical rocks, you can make a tropical environment. Which does look a lot more lush with the grass from the temperate biome, as it did in the alpine and taiga biome. 
Using the seed plants and the leafy climbers, I made an environment that I think is passable as a swamp by putting in a lot of water. I don't really like any of the other trees for this environment, although I acknowledge that the seed plants and leafy climbers alone aren't really great either. It's not my favorite biome within a biome for sure, but still worth showing, I figured. Next up is another coniferous habitat. We don't have snow on the temperate maps, but we do have two really pretty rock textures. Again, use the calamites and finding the places where the trees are the most dense for the best effect and get rid of the foliage in the other spots so the rock still shows through. Speaking of rocks, again use the taiga placeable rocks for this biome. And finally for the tempered biome, a redwood forest. I use a mix of pretty much all terrain types, but I want the ground to have more dirt and rock than outside of the biome, to add to it looking different. Of course we add in the redwood trees, which we thankfully have as a brush on this map. While editing, I did see that I forgot to add rocks in the original and of course I hadn't saved that file. So I went back into the game and created a new redwood biome complete with a mixture of rocks. I hope the effort at least is worth a like. Now I'm going to show you what to do in the tropical biome, which sneakily has one of the most unique and one of my favorite sub biomes. But to start with, making a desert on the tropical map is as easy as can be. We have the perfect sand and trees for it. So just fill the biome with sand and either make a little oasis using the palm trees or leave it completely barren. On the tropical map, we are also going to make our coniferous environment. Put down sand first and then lightly layer the rock texture on top of that to create a lighter colored rock texture. Then use the calamites as foliage. For this one, I used a combination of rock colors. Third is a redwood forest. Unfortunately, we don't actually have redwood trees on the tropical maps. So we'll have to play pretend with the Tempskia trees. And I probably mispronounced that, but what else is new? It's not ideal, but I always say for this game, we have to use our imagination. And it does have fern leaves that are very reminiscent of the Sorna environment that we see in the Lost World Jurassic Park. Exchanging the Tempskia trees for the Ginkgo trees immediately reforms pretty much the exact environment that we just created for the redwoods into a temperate forest environment. So this is a two for one. You can make it a redwood with the Tempskia or a temperate forest with the Ginkgos. Now last for the tropical environment and my personal favorite is a volcanic environment with hardened lava on the ground. I've used a combination of the two rock textures and a lot of individually placeable rocks, of course all of the tropical kind. Now you can leave it completely barren without any foliage, but you can also add some greenery since volcanic soil is very fertile. If you've been enjoying these tips, please give the video a like and subscribe to see my park builds in full, including a complete biodome park coming up soon. And if you're wondering how I got all of these dinosaurs into the aviary, check out my previous video. I will link it at the end of this one. The Biosyn Sanctuary is categorized as Alpine, but it actually has a completely unique biome within the game and one of the best for making very different looking exhibits. First off, I made a burnt down forest using the dark rock texture and dead trees. Just like the last tropical sub biome we covered, you can leave it barren, but I added some greenery, specifically the leafy climbers, and I focus on the area that spawned the logs. You can cover up some of the surrounding foliage with rocks, which is a tip that you can also apply to any of the other sub biomes on any of the maps, like the desert. Speaking of deserts, we can make one with the same technique and tools that I've shown before for the other maps, so I don't think we need to cover it in depth again. And the same goes for the redwood forest. It really is a shame that they replaced the old tree set that we used to have on the Biosyn map at the very beginning, because now we don't have redwoods as individually placeable trees, leaving the forest a little bit sparse. So really focus on the areas where the tree brush generates the most dense foliage, and then delete around that to expose the rock texture. Finally, another appearance of the coniferous environment using the gray rock texture, the calamites, and the tiger rocks. The biosyn trees work really well for a swamp, I think, but you can't really avoid using them in the rest of your park to make it a truly unique and separate sub biome. But it is the best map for a swamp, in my opinion, because the foliage looks so primordial. 
My tip is just make the entire map a swamp and use the other four environments that I showed as sub biomes within the swamp. I should point out that while I forgot to create and record it, the temperate, tropical and biosyn maps are also ideal for a grassland biome. But I don't think I need to show you how to make those. The desert biome is very, very challenging for making different biomes within it because the terrain paints are all very desert appropriate. I'll go as far as to say that I don't really think it's a suitable biome for making different sub biomes. That being said, I gave it the good old college try and made four biomes in the desert as well. But before I show you, let me use this moment to say that the Sierra Nevada map is absolutely useless for making different biomes. Just look at this. These are all the different terrain paints that you have in the Sierra Nevada map. They're not actually different. There's nothing you can do with this. Just embrace that it is a snowy biome. And for that reason, I'm skipping that map for this video. I also want to add a little disclaimer for the biologists out there that I'm very well aware that what I'm showing in this video are not accurate representations of any given biome. It's just whatever I figured we can create in the game with the limited tools that we have. Please keep the limitations in mind and just use your imagination. On the desert maps, we make a temperate forest with sand, ginkgo trees and tropical rocks, just as I've shown before. Also using sand and the tropical rocks, but this time in combination with the calamites, we make our coniferous environment. Again, the desert map sucks for this, I know that. Just embrace that it is a desert and lean into it, honestly. Anyway, third is the driest swamp ever with as many seed plants as you can generate and plenty of water. And finally, a facsimile of a redwood forest with the reddish rock texture and the Tempskia trees. Those were all my biomes within the biomes. Let me know which of the in-game default biomes is your favorite in a comment down below and hit the like and subscribe on the way down. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time. Enjoy the game. Mm -hmm.